Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Mailbox Power Mastermind Call that happens every single Monday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, 9 a.m. Mountain, 10 Central, 11 Eastern. Don't worry. I think I got that right. <laughs> so for those of you who are on Eastern, it's almost uh, afternoon instead of good morning, but I can still say good morning because it's before noon. <laughs> um, if you are watching the replay, we miss you and we would love to see you, your face, and have you participate on a Monday morning call. Um, so please join us on Monday mornings at M B as in boy, P as in Peter, mastermindcall.com. That's how you can find us every Monday morning. Usually, even if it's a holiday, we're here. Um, or I have somebody filling in for us. And if you haven't been watching the replays, you need to go watch. Um, Kimberly's done some amazing calls. You need to go watch some of Kimberly's calls and Lulu's filled in for us. So yeah. please go back and watch the replays. But we always start the week with, well, not but, because it's not a but. We always start the week with the wins because we love starting out the week right. So if anybody has a mailbox power win they'd like to share, we'd like to hear it. I see Irma's got her hand up. She was like, yeah, me, me. <laughs> I couldn't wait. It's been a while since I've been on here, but I actually signed up two uh, pro accounts. One was from the insurance group I joined and the other one was from, remember the Kim Angeli mm -hmm. presentation? And then I yep. went to her training thing and mm -hmm. one was from there. Awesome. And I hope you get another one from there. Awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Now, for anybody who signed up somebody new, have you started them off right? Are you meeting with them for at least, I would say, a minimum of an hour? And I know I'm asking a lot of you, but uh, the reason why I'm asking a lot of you is I know you all want to be successful in Mailbox Power. And the way to be successful is you've got to nurture those clients at the very beginning so that they stick and have automation set up so that they stay. Because really the goal is residual income and helping clients in the long term with their client acquisition and nurturing. So make sure you're taking that time. And if you're not willing to take that time, make sure that if they're an executive, they're using the executive bell. And if they are a pro and you don't want to take that time, reach out to Mike and I. Um, we do offer onboarding training. There is a small fee, but as I just got back from eWomen Conference and most businesses are willing to pay for speed. And when you talk about it that way, you're going to pay one way or another. Time or money? I should say time, frustration and or money. Um, because the majority of people to learn a new system, even if they are techie, it's frustrating at first because they don't know it. So ask them, you want to pay with it, your time and frustration, or would you rather pay for speed? So make sure you're getting them started right. Anybody else who's got some wins? I would like, to, I do. I can't find where I can raise my hand. Oh, though. you're fine, Linda. Go ahead. <laughs> Welcome. We haven't seen you in a while. I hope you've been I'm well. I have been well. I was. I've been spending uh, spend a, the month of July playing with the grandbabies yeah. and traveling and visiting family. And I've been kind of off the grid a little bit. So yeah, That's okay. I get it. <laughs> so um, I have. Uh, I also signed up a couple uh, pro accounts last week and continue to meet. Uh, I have a dynamite BNI chapter. Uh, it's just so good. And uh, it's just full of home services people who are loving mailbox power. Nice. So I would second what you have to say. I never sign anyone up that I don't get um, there. I don't get them set up. Good for you. And even 
I've gone so far with a young plumber that we set everything up and he's so busy that I, I said, just send me the name and address. I'll put him in there for you. And the thank you card will go. I'll do whatever they need to do to make them successful. And I'm my retention rate has been very good because if if you don't set them up, they won't stay. Right. Uh, yeah. I have two people who've been in there for a year and a half who have never sent a card. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they're we still gotta get them, we gotta they're get them still, sending cards i keep trying to but they keep uh yeah anyway is it a I, time thing linda i don't know i th i think they've forgotten that they have an account i they're bni members they're not putting in a referral anyway it's just it, it's just funny i have two of them that have been in since january of 23 they still pay yeah. <laughs> and their, their subscription. I think they still want to. I have, I have a favor to ask also. I put this on Facebook. I found it really irritating that when someone signs up in a, in their profile, when they put in their phone number, it doesn't automatically put in the dashes. And because of that, when you're using the merge field, on cards that say return phone, the phone number doesn't shows up just straight. I reached out to customer service. They said, well, you're the only person that cares about this. And I said, well, I let me tell you, please notice it on Facebook, ask customer service, because that is just aggravating to me that you, that we ever, if I'm helping anyway, it's just aggravating. So Linda, what I always tell all the customers is whatever you enter when you're entering your profile is exactly how it'll show up on the card. So if all you do is put numbers, that's all that's going to show up. So format it correctly the way you like it. Some people like dots. Some people like dashes. Some people like the parentheses. So in a way, I'm glad that corporate doesn't format it for us when we put the numbers in because many people hate the... I, I don't know. I like parentheses around the first three, the area code, but I don't know how many of my customers are like, oh, I don't like that. Like they want dots or they want dashes. So I've done even a video. I think it's out there on YouTube. Whatever you put in those fields, when you sign people up, make sure you tell them whatever you put there is exactly what will show up on the cards when you're using our merge fields. So format it the way you want it formatted. Well, that's the smart thing, but I'd also like customer service to fix it so that they just do dash. I don't care what they do either. I'm happy to say that, but I'd like some, you know, I'd like to have them uh, have that be out of it's to me, it just makes sense to have it somehow broken down uh, yeah. rather than no. just the numbers. Uh, so that, and, and, I, and I get it. Um, or maybe they just need to put something that says next to phone number format the way you want it show up on cards versus just putting numbers in um, so that somebody doesn't just put numbers. Yeah. Well, I have a few yeah. that did and it's aggravating. Uh, yeah. Anyway, that's my two cents. No, I love it. And um, it's something that I've said for years to my customers. So j just make sure as you're signing up a customer, even if they're doing it, you're giving them the link, which I never recommend. I've maybe of all the signups, 10% maybe have signed up directly on their own. Um, maybe a little bit higher if you count all my early on ones, but I usually do it with them. And when we're going through it, I, I specifically say, yeah, whatever you put here is exactly how it shows up on the cards. So make sure you format it the way you want it formatted. Yeah. Very smart. Thank you. Yep. Andrea. Good morning, everyone. Um, I have a appointment this week to um, hopefully sign up and because it's a yes and we're going to move forward. And until it's actually done, I never say it's done, but with a, uh, with a church and uh, getting information out there about their uh, programs because they have a lot of phenomenal programs that uh, they don't have any direct 
time to add, you know, reaching out to the community. It's just the, through the uh, congregation. So I said, wow. we have a tool. So that I'm really excited because it's my first church um, to uh, be able to, uh, you know, to help them get the word out there. So that's what I'm excited about this week. And uh, Kimberly, uh, training you did a couple of weeks ago. I have used that over and over. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Hey, Andrea, is that church here in Colorado or is it some? It's actually in Las Vegas. Ah, awesome. I, I will be working with the uh, one that I've started going to in Colorado because they, they too, um, you know, um, they're kind of rebuilding. They went through some um, challenges and um, rebuilding awesome. and I'm, I'm building that relationship with them um, slowly because I'm not always, uh, in Colorado, yeah. but, yeah. uh, this one, I've had a relationship with the pastor for a couple of, uh, years and his daughter is the one that, um, uh, is the admin for the church. So, uh, nice. he, he, he and computers are not the greatest. He doesn't know diddly squat. So he, I've actually had the, um, uh, pleasure of meeting her personally and so we're getting to the next step this week awesome I was going to say if it's in Colorado I'd be glad to uh, help you you know with them getting it set up in that if we needed to but obviously if it's in I mean I could fly to Vegas I mean you know that would be just such a hardship for me to fly oh to, I know you, you know. that's a place you just never go if <laughs> uh, awesome any other wins before we um get into our mastermind okay awesome uh and i would say i um have learned asking questions and i just came back from a conference like i said e women network conference and uh, some amazing stuff came out of it I thought about grabbing my notebook and sharing today from that, but I actually yesterday was going through the office because I'm trying to put together a basket um, to help with donations. We do a, uh, we have our eWomen Network luncheon this week and they're looking for more foundation baskets or foundation items um, to bid on in our auction. So as I was doing that, I was going through the office and then I, I found a book that I remembered I got and it's been a while since I've looked at it and it's 77 ways to get more customers. And I was like, Ooh, that's a good thing to talk about on the Monday morning calls. So I just wanted to point out a few and you can always recommend this book to your clients because obviously, and if I remember correctly, it's by Chris Cardell. And if you research it for, I think all we had to do was pay shipping on it. It was pretty inexpensive. It was a free book. I I think we had to pay five bucks or something like seven bucks for shipping, but it'd be something to recommend. But I was kind of, going through it and I noticed the first few um, unconverted leads. How many of us have talked to people sort of like Andrea and um, maybe they've said yes at some point to meet with you and they were somewhat interested but even though we have a follow-up tool we haven't been good at following up with them because I'll be the first to admit I, I follow up at least with holiday cards and that, but and usually birthday, it depends on who they are and how interested they are. But I don't necessarily, I have to work on this myself, is putting them in a nurture sequence about mailbox power and what it does. And then multiple follow-ups, we all know it takes seven to 12 touches with direct personalized direct mail. It's a little less, so that's strategy number two. Obviously, referrals, how do we get referrals? We love on and create raving fans. But then I started looking at all the chapter titles. And strategy number 12, use direct mail. 
Strategy 13, personalize your mailings. Um, strategy 15, send bulky mail. Strategy 16, test postcards. I just started looking through this and I'm like, oh, I got to go back and reread this book because I'm there's so much in here that has to do with talking about direct mail and the power of direct mail. So I'm going to go to uh, strategy 12, which happens to be on page 27. And they're real short chapters. They're like one page or two pages. Um, going, this says, going on for over a hundred years now, direct mail has been an incredible way of getting customers into any business, but it's not used by small businesses, anything like as much as it used to be. In other words, we're a secret and we need to not be a secret anymore. Everyone is excited about the internet, and I'm generally well known for the internet material I do. I'm a raving fan of the internet as much as anybody else, but if direct mail is still an equally valid source of new business and new customers for you, why wouldn't you use it? The challenge of getting somebody who doesn't know you and who's never spent money with you to give you money is a significant one. A lot of that can be done on the internet, but there is a big proportion of the population who still value and want something physical to look at, understand, and literally hold in their hands. It's the tactile before they give you money. Now, they use a lot of, um, it's in pounds, um, because obviously the author is not in the U.S., but I was, where's the, it must not have been that one. Hold on. There was a percentage I found in one of these chapters. Maybe it was postcards. Uh, where was it? Now I'm not going to find it. I should have bookmarked it. But it talked about, and we've seen this stat before, um, where direct mail is a higher conversion rate than digital. It's a higher conversion rate than paid ads. It's a higher conversion rate than email. So why are we not using it? So you need to use books like this. There are lots of them out there. ROI of kindness. There's this one. There's um, there's uh, Joe's book, which is in our uh, store. Go find the books. And instead of, yep, instead of you trying to tell them and giving them facts, if you had the book with you when you did it, I got thinking about it when I saw this book. I'm like, stop trying to be the authority. Stop trying to be the authority. Third-party testimonials. Use your customer's testimonials. Pick up the phone. Text another affiliate. Um, I'm sure that anybody on here that's in their field, like if I were to text Brian and say, hey, Brian, I've got somebody in your field that I'm meeting with right now. Are you available to just um, do a quick uh, three-way call? I'm sure Brian would say yes. Kimberly, too. I mean, all of you, I'm sure, would do that, just like Mike and I would do for you if we were available. So tap into other resources and stop trying to be the expert and, like, throw up on people and just taking it out of your head versus you could have one or two books that you had yellow highlight or green highlight in the book and say, this is what Chris Cardell says about direct mail. This is what Joe Kenamore says about direct mail. This is, I got a postal analytics. I got an email over the weekend. We would love to talk to your um, company about adding direct mail to your, um, to your agency and 
I'm thinking we already do direct mail. But then I started reading their text. Go get on all the email lists of all these other companies that are our pseudo competition because they have staff that has been doing this longer than Mailbox Power has, and they have all the analytics and all the um, the data, and they're putting it in their emails, and you can turn around and use it. This is what so-and-so says about direct mail. So let's talk about that for a second. Have any of you done that? Or are you like me? <laughs> And I tend to just say, like I've said on the calls, uh, it takes seven to 12, you know, the the national statistics show it takes seven to 12. And nowadays with digital, it's more like 20. Yeah, I put up um, quotes and then who said them, but I don't show the source, you know, the actual mm -hmm. book or whatever. Yep. But I got thinking about that when I was pulling out books because I was trying to put together a basket. And I was thinking of a personal development because Mike and I, when we go to conferences and that, um, many times we'll buy multiple copies of a book so that we can bless somebody um, in our organization. Or it, So there's multiple books that I have on my bookshelf that I have two, three, four, five copies. And I'm like, oh, I could put together a professional development basket since we just came back from conference for the drawing for the auction silent auction well it's not really a silent auction it starts as silent and then goes live and I started pulling books off the shelf and I'm like oh we need to. and we talked last week about doing a book study kind of on this call or going through a book and I was like oh let's talk about that this morning so any other ideas I, I have a question. Sure. It's about presentation. I have one, I hope, coming up soon. And their screen looked big. And I said, what size is your screen? And she said about 65 inches. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at PowerPoint, says 16.9. That's know? just the ratio. Yeah, 16? don't worry about it. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Um, 16.9 is just widescreen and most TVs are widescreen now or most monitors are set up for widescreen. Um, you 16.9 is widescreen. The, I don't remember what the other one is. Cause I always, said that the screen is 65 inches. It doesn't 60. matter. Irma, it doesn't matter. Oh, it doesn't? Okay. doesn't matter. That that has nothing to do with the ratio. It has to do with how wide versus how tall it is. I would just, Don't however worry. you normally set up your presentation, whether it's 16, 9, or whatever it is in PowerPoint, doesn't matter. Just keep doing what you've been doing. It'll work fine. It'll just be much bigger. Okay. And it won't be drained out like I've no. seen. Nope. Okay. As long as you use vivid colors and it's you've got a lot of contrast. Right. Like I'm going to use an example. I know Suzanne had her hand up, but I'm going to use an example right now. Um, her background. Notice how she has white text and there's dark yeah. blue and light blue. And that white text isn't as readable as her black. Make sure that it's very readable on your computer screen and make sure. Yeah, it's I got all that. Right, right. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you'll be fine. You'll be okay. fine. Don't. Thanks. Um, yeah, yeah, I like big screens. It means I can read it better, but that doesn't mean make your text smaller. Yeah. FYI, some people will do that. Oh, I got a big screen. So it, 12 point or 14 point on a 65 inch screen is still big. Do not put a lot of work. I know you don't, Irma, but I'm just for everybody else. Don't be like, oh, I got this big 100 inch or 65 inch screen. And so I can put more words on it. You'll no. lose people. You'll lose no, people. Right. So, <laughs> white I space is good. Suzanne. 
You're muted. Thank you. Um, yeah, I was trying to send something to you. Um, and I think I mentioned this once before. I have a Google alert for direct mail. And um, the other day on the 9th, I received, you know, adapting to new FCC rules, the shift to direct mail marketing, you know, FTC updates uh, made in USA guidance um, for advertising and branding that has to do with direct mail. I mean, it's like it really keeps you up to date on what's going on. And I saw something the other day, I was trying to find it, that um, it was some company is like, a big to do is going to be using direct mail It's going to personalize It's going to do all this stuff. And I, I thought, how do we check out to see what our competition really is? I mean, you know, it might be, you know, a big company type of thing, you know, I, I don't know, you know, that something beyond what we're doing. I would just like you're doing, you have Google alerts for direct mail, just, just Google search direct mail and direct mail mm. companies and see what's out there. Right. Um, and as Justin and others have said, I don't know anybody that offers everything from everything. Uh, postcard mm. marketing to flyers and newsletters and booklets and cards and gifts, all personal personalized gifts. I haven't seen anybody that offers it all. Um, they specialize in one thing or another and they might offer half of the subset we do, but I haven't found a company that does it all and does it for the client. There are companies right. out there, there are print companies that will do everything we do, but they don't also ship it for you. They, they mm -hmm. aren't the fulfillment they don't do the fulfillment. They send it to you and you have to turn around and send it out. They will do, they will do, um, uh, um, Neil, what's the word? Um, not blind shipping. Fulfillment. Yeah. But what do they call it? Where your name isn't on it? Not blind. Blind ship. Is it blind ship? I thought it was called yeah. something else, but there are some companies that will do that. So that their name and their they won't put an invoice in it and you won't know where it came from. Um I think it's white label, white labeled. No, it's it it's specifically you usually yeah. have to pay extra. You pay an extra dollar or an extra two dollars for them to take their name and everything off. They're printing companies, promotional product or printing companies that instead of shipping it to you and then you having to get it to your customer, either shipped or um, it's blind. I think I've heard it called something else too, but, um, we'll call it blind shipping for right now is that they put your name and address. Like it came from you, just like mailbox power does for everything, mm -hmm. but that's not the standard for a lot of printing companies. The standard for them is they ship it to you. Any other thoughts? Does, is that helpful? Kimberly. I think the more we share third-party documentation on direct mail, the more we can, because the bottom line is documentation beats conversation. I, oh, it, it, I want to write that one down. Documentation. <laughs> hold on. I got documentation one, I got beats conversation. Yep. The eyeballs are off of you and on third party, third party rules. <laughs> yep. Conversation. And you're really showing them the value that is documented by other sources right. on the validity and the credibility of what we're doing with Mailbox Power. Yep. And I would go grab, to, you know, I'd go to... Postal Analytics, I'm trying to think of, uh, I'm, I'm blanking right now on the other companies, but there's several other companies that if you have a company that wants to do postcard marketing, go grab testimonials from other companies of the types of returns people are getting with direct mail. Are there guarantees that the company you're talking to will get the same return? No, 
They're in a different city. They have a different demographic. There are no guarantees with marketing. But if it can be done and it can have that high of a success rate by one, it can have that high of a success rate by others. It just might need to be tweaked in the market that you are sharing it in. And that, I guess that's the other thing I want to say is so many people design something, whether it be their company designs it or they pay somebody to design it or they take it out of the system and they use it. And if they're not getting the results they hope for, they're like, yeah, well, that doesn't work. And they don't tweak it or they use the same thing over and over again. We need to A-B test stuff. We need to, if it's not working, look at the language and tweak it up because maybe that worked. And even our mailbox power design, somebody's used it in Florida or California and it's working fantastic. But maybe in Colorado, that's the wording needs to be tweaked. So it's okay to go in and tweak stuff. And that's what I've said to all companies because I've had companies come to me and say, I hear everybody having great success and I'm just not. I don't know why. And then I look at what they're sending. And then I look at the language that they added to the postcard or the card. And it's all about them and how great they are and all their accolades. I'm like, that's why it's not working. I'm sorry, but that's why it's not working. It's not about you. It's not about your client. It's about your client's client. It needs to be all about the end user, the, the person who is getting the mail. If I might just add as well, um, where we've had some really good success is pique their curiosity. Keep it really simple. Don't tell them every single thing. Just and make the front of the card not look like a brochure. Make it look like, you know, something fun, something that makes them want to turn it over. Just yep. uh, you know, use Canva or use, you know, fun pictures or, you know, we started a uh for a mortgage guy, uh uh, a postcard that says, did you know? Mm -hmm. And on the other side, there's some fun fact about, did, in fact, did you know that a human uh, eats 70 insects in the course of their life and 12 of them are spiders? And then we just said, you know, hope things are, this is a stay in touch postcard, you know, hope everything's going well. If you need anything, give me a call, Rick, your mortgage guide, done with it. And it stands out. It stands out. Um, Even cartoons. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Make it something that piques their curiosity or depending on what your goal is to just stay in touch and stay top of mind, you know, do something fun. Don't, I believe cards should make people smile or cry and yep. nothing in between. So. Mm -hmm. Great tip. Well, with that, I just noticed the time and we will wrap it up for this week. I appreciate all of you being on the call. Let's see if we can get a few more on next week. Go invite others or um, put a shout out in the Facebook group, the affiliate group, and say, if you're, miss if you're missing these calls, you're missing out. And um, I will see you all next Monday on the Mastermind Call. Have a great week, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thanks for all the tips.